Hi, I'm Phil Willett, General Manager here at The Daily Item. We pride ourselves on providing top local news stories to keep our readers up to date and well informed, not only in Lynn, but in our surrounding communities as well. For all the local news you need, be sure to pick up your copy of The Daily Item today at a store near you, or you can go to itemlive.com to subscribe. We here at The Daily Item are proud to present you with another great episode of Lynn Cam's own North Shore Infrastructure. Enjoy the program. I'm Sean Donahue, and this is North Shore Infrastructure. NSI is a show which is dedicated to educating the consumer about infrastructure and how it is utilized in the supply chain system. We direct our attention to the organizations right here in the North Shore. Infrastructure is the lifeblood of worldwide trade and provides us with the luxury of sustainability. I'm Sean Donahue, and you can expect to see me in the field firsthand demonstrating how the North Shore uses infrastructure and the role we play in the supply chain system. On this week's episode of North Shore Infrastructure, we go to Peabody, Massachusetts to visit Crystal B Supply. We're here in Topsfield, Massachusetts at the headquarters of the Essex County Beekeepers Association. I'm here with Phil Watson, president of the uh, club. Phil, thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. Um, so obviously we're here to talk a little bit about bees. We're here to talk about you and your experiences. Um, give us a little bit of insight as to who you are and what you do here. Uh, my name's Phil Watson. I'm president of Essex County Beekeepers Association. Um, I've been involved in the club for about 20 years, since 1992. I've served on the board of directors, um, various positions in the, in the uh, club. Um, have been the chairman of B School for four different years and help out with the fair and, and things in general. Okay. Um, now you guys have been in existence for a while now. 1923. Tell us why the Essex County Beekeepers Association exists. I mean, what is its function? Our, our, our function and our object, um, our mission statement, if you will, is to educate the public about bees and beekeeping. Can you tell us how beekeepers really categorize themselves? Well, there's actually three different categories. There's uh, hobbyists, which is the majority of, the, of us that are in the club. Um, I would say was probably 80, 85% of us are all hobbyists. There's probably 10 to 15% of us that are uh, sideliners. The rest, around 5% are small commercial beekeepers. Can you tell us, is there any like, I mean, how did beekeeping come into existence? Is there any historical significance? Honeybees have been around since the beginning of time. As far back as you can go with a caveman, um, they were robbing out uh, nests of honeybees, whether it was in skeps or trees or caves or in rock crevices, um, and they were going and harvesting that honey because they recognized that it was, a, uh, at that time, it was the only sweetener that they had. Sugar hadn't been uh, developed yet. And then over time, it's evolved through different things with different people. Um, honeybees are not native to North America. To the best of our knowledge, they were brought over here by the pilgrims. It's pretty easy to understand that you know bees are kept to collect honey. What else can bees be used for? Colony will produce honey. Um, they collect pollen. They produce propolis. Um, and of course, the beeswax. The industry itself. Um, <coughs> What significance does it have? Nationally, um, it's a huge significance in terms of pollination and pollination of crops for fruits and vegetables um, and the various grains. For example, alfalfa uh, is one, and alfalfa is a crop that's raised to feed cattle um, and livestock, and you know it, it's just a giant food chain. So it, a lot of people don't understand this, but um, in order for us to exist and continue to sustain life here on planet Earth with nine billion people, bees are pretty much the most important part of agriculture. I mean, if, if, if not, at least it starts there. One out of every three mouthfuls of food that you consume or we consume, a honeybee is responsible in some way for helping produce that mouthful of food. Phil, I appreciate you. Um, preparing me for what I'm about to do with Vin. <laughs> um, it should be interesting. Um, when we come back, you'll be seeing me live in the field working with bees and their hives. So hopefully things go well. Um, Great. I appreciate the time. All the best and uh, good luck this season. All right, good luck. All righty. 
Thanks for joining us. I'm Sean Donahue with NSI. We're here at Crystal Bee Supply with Vin Gaglioni. Vin has been in this industry since the late 80s. Vin, I appreciate you uh, welcoming us into your place of business. Give us a day-to-day -day in the shoes of Vin Gaglioni. It's kind of a uh, mixed message here. That we, we're in business to sell a product, but we're also, along with that product, we like to educate the public and the new beekeepers who uh, join us from year to year. We uh, offer classes for our first and second year beekeepers and the main goal is to teach the public. Can you give me a gist of like what your background is? I had the opportunity to get in in the early 80s uh, strictly as a hobbyist and like most beekeepers um, the hive just seemed to increase and eventually we had more honey than we could use so we started selling it and then moving our hives into farms and in getting involved with the Essex County Beekeepers, um, teaching some of the classes they uh, offer. So pretty much a hobby that just took off into a business. It was almost like you had to do this. <laughs> you were too far <laughs> into it. Little by little, uh, we became a dealer. Uh, set up in a small shop, selling equipment. And then we started trucking bees ourselves. There's a lot of things we have to do, and the farmers realize that without the honeybee, they would probably lose as much as 60% of their crops. Wow. Um, every third spoonful of food we take, bees are responsible for, whether it be for uh, feed for animals, uh, your vegetables and your fruits, uh, they all have to be pollinated. So in a small way, we to our share of pollination in this area. Some would say that, you know, bees are more of a pest than they are an ally, but when it comes down to food distribution and meeting the expectations of Americans, they play a pretty big role. Well, a lot of people don't realize it. They think that everything that flies is a bee, and there are many <laughs> varieties of insects out there. Um, as a rule, honeybees are too busy uh, gathering nectar for themselves and hopefully storing it for us to bother with stinging you. Uh, they're not like a wasp or a hornet. They, because they, when they sting, they give a portion of their life because uh, part of their body comes out with a stinger and shortly after that they die. So they don't look to commit suicide. Yeah. So, they uh, have more important things to do. They have, exactly. It's incredible. It sounds like a lot of sacrifice. It's uh, a friend of mine used to call it a labor of love. You guys are the biggest or among the largest distributors in this industry in New England. Um, who are your impact employees? We're fortunate. Uh, my wife is very social and everybody loves her. She has that personality. And it's strictly uh, my wife, my son, and we're, <laughs> I have a granddaughter, she's seven. Uh, but uh, she comes in and she's, uh, she's like my wife, she's uh, very friendly and uh, we're breaking her in with bees. So. <laughs> That's good. Get that out of the way early, yeah. you know. <laughs> well, I, I, I can't thank you enough for sitting down and talking to us and, and you know, revealing some of your secrets to <laughs> the business of beekeeping. Next, we'll be taking a little bit more of an in-depth tour um, of uh, Crystal Bee Supply and uh, we'll be looking at some hives too so um, stick around and we'll be right back. The following program has been made possible through contributions from the community. To help fund future projects from your community TV station please contact us and ask how. You can reach us by phone at 781-596-9641 online at www.lincamtv.com or via email at info at lincamtv.com. So we're here in Boxford, Mass at, at one of the locations uh, for C Crystal Bee Supply. Um, here next to me is Joe Gaglioni. He's going to be bringing us through the process and making sure that we don't get stung. Um, so what we have to do is remain calm and uh, also remain calm. Basically what happens is the bees will, will they'll have an alarm scent. It, it, it's a pheromone. 
and if other bees smell it, then they'll start getting alarmed. That's what this is for, so you okay. camouflage the scent. Okay. All now, right. we don't want to go in the flight path. You want to get right on the, uh, the left-hand side of the hive, but cool. I would go this way. Okay. Now, I just don't like to walk directly in front of the hive. And today, we're going to be uh, basically winterizing the hive. A few things. One, uh, it's a nice, dry house for a mouse to go in. When the bees cluster at night, um, what will happen is the bees, the mouse will sneak in and actually start making a house out of some of the frames in a beehive. Oh. So if we do not put this piece of metal in the front, that's going to happen and up against the box and pry up. Now, unfortunately, it's really stuck. I try not to make a crackling sound, but it's going to happen that. Okay. Okay. Gentle. Nice and calm. Now, see how they're starting to come out? Mm hmm. Yeah, they, they're not happy. So let's make them happy. See this red? Yep. That's propolis. That's bee glue. Yeah. Oh, here they are. They look very happy. They're fairly calm. They really are calm right now. What we want to do is check the stores. Uh, I can't really lift this whole hive because it's a little too big. So, right. pry tool. I pry side to side on Good. the number two frame. Okay. And there. Nice and gentle. And what I'm doing is I'm breaking it, separating it slightly. Yep. Okay. Leverage tool. Leverage tool. A little hook in there. And lift up. Okay. So it is slightly stuck, so I slowly lift it up to see that this is about 100% honey. Wow. It's all honey. That is pure honey. And you can see a spot right down here where they had taken the wax off, and that's the plastic foundation underneath. They recycle. They stole a piece of wax from that spot and used it in another spot. What we want to do is we want to do the pry. Pry. Yep. Nice and gentle. Yeah. Now do the other side. So nice and slow. I got these bees. Yeah. Okay, so now what you really want to do, you want to grab the ears to manipulate and move. Okay, okay. so you got this guy. Yep. So what I do, see there's an opening there? Yep. That used to have brood, the babies. And what they do, later in the year, they stop putting their brood in the upper boxes and they fill 100% honey. And they're in the process of filling that, though this time of the year, they're pretty much done filling it. You get right down in the cell with the sunlight. Can you see the shine? Kinda. That's open nectar. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, I see right? what you're saying. It's open nectar. So they're still packing a little away. Anything with a wax cap is already packed honey. Slide that to the end. Okay. Go for the next frame. Cool. See the pollen, a different color pollen, orange, whitish, cream, yellow. I'll actually pack honey on top of it, make an airtight package. Wow. That side you see a little pollen. Look at these guys going nuts over here, they're eating that snack. Right now they're actually taking in any busted honey. So you you would would you say that like you've got a, a good relationship with these bees? You know what, it doesn't go like that. No? It, it's funny, because one day I've come here and, and, and gotten chewed up, they were really upset. All the field bees were in it. Just it was I was taking the honey from them is what I was doing. It wasn't exactly the warmest day. But today it's almost 70. Uh, you know, it's September. Uh, normally they would be a little more agitated because we're going into it. If you don't, once they situate themselves for the winter, you shouldn't really go in deep, and that's why I'm just checking the honey stores and seeing what they're doing up top. Alright. You guys actually, this is rare. That is called a brood chamber. Okay? Oh, that is capped down brood. here. Oh, nope, right here. There's a bee right there, ready to emerge. See his face looking out? That they have pollen around the brood chamber, then honey around that. Eventually this will shrink down, you'll have no brood up in the top box. This is a strong hive. They have a lot of brood, a lot of honey stores, they have three boxes worth, but I'm glad I could give you a, a view of that. Yeah, yeah. You're being very gentle, the bees would come in your face and they would actually let you know that you're really disrupting them. Yeah, I, I see that. They are coming closer to me. Um, they are like kind of like, hey, what are you doing here? <laughs> but you're being gentle. You know? well, see, there's some. Hello, friends. If you have to inspect the two boxes, we're usually in and out of a hive in you know, 10, 15 minutes, depending on what we're doing. Uh, but being gentle is the most important. This guy looks a little pissed at me. Yeah, but you know what the best thing is? You can't sting through a veil. That's good. All right. Ooh. Beautiful. Is that now? Is that side all brood too? I don't know. Do you see? Turn it a little bit to the other direction. There we go. Nope. Now turn it so the camera can see the other side. 
the brood chamber. We always leave the frames right over the hive. That is a good brood pattern right there. This is gonna be my Facebook picture. Get a, get a good shot of the dawn. <laughs> oh my golly. Now we, so, we're putting down very, very gently in the very, yeah. We took the number two frame out. We always wanna leave the frames in the same order. So what I do is I slide the number three, four, and five back. Okay. Just like that. And then I made a position for the, the frame number two, which I put down on the ground. How many bees are in this? Well, in the middle of the season, it could be up to 60,000. Right now, since the middle, probably beginning of August, they, they ramp their egg laying down, so they try to have the population of the bees drop. Because what happens is you just need enough bees to make a cluster for warmth. If you eat too many of your stores, you're going to run out of food. So right. the population does dip down. These guys look like they're getting aggravated. You want to smoke right here? See how they, they're starting to get a little bit of agitation. Really getting smoked up a little bit real quick. All right, so we're putting another guy on top of we're here. We're putting an empty box on the very top. We do give the bees uh, antibiotics. Sounds kind of funny. <laughs> but this is sugar syrup and it has an antibiotic in it. So what I'll do, little feeder, they can walk right in. I'll put this feeder right down inside here, right on top of the frames. And then I'll put the sugar syrup right in. They'll go and make themselves at home and, and they'll eat that. Then we have another medication, believe it or not, for bees. That we put in, this is for Varroa. Looks like bee chapstick. It pretty much looks it, but it is not. Uh, it's a time all based product, it's organic. What it does, the vapors actually kill the varroa mite. And the varroa mite actually attacks the larvae. So I slide the cover on, try to get any debris out because what will happen, the bees actually will spend time cleaning it. I put the cover down. Now there is a, a ventilation in the front. You can see that little notch in the cover right there. So if I put the outer cover down, but there's plenty of room. Here, that ventilation. Reason being, condensation. If this was totally closed up and these bees were making 90 degrees, a 90 degree ball, you'd have condensation. The right. roof here would be soaking wet and it would be raining from the ceiling. That'd uh, freeze to death. Basically, this, this hive's almost ready for winter. Yeah. Um, what is like the next step? You know, in about three weeks, four weeks, we'll actually top paper wrap it. Um, and that's it. If this hive didn't have enough honey stores, I would be putting a lot more than uh, you know a couple jars in. I could actually put a freezer bag full of a gallon of you know, sugar syrup with meds in there, uh, top hive feeders. You could feed them up to two gallons at a time. Really? Yeah. But this hive, plenty of stores. This hive does not need any extra feed. It just needs the medications. When does the extracting and where does it happen? The extracting happens um, at, our, at our house, at the extracting room. Basically, all the honey supers we take off, we try to uh, scrape, uncap them, and put them in our extractors within three or four days. Warm honey always extracts faster than the cold honey. We didn't really look much at the entrance. I actually, putting the mouse guard on there, kind of made a bottleneck. So you can see a lot more traffic at the entrance, plus we disturbed them a little bit, so they're all out. But you know, you try to look for bees bringing pollen in, you know, maybe a little fighting at the entrance. You have some guard bees, like this bee here, was checking that bee out as he got to the entrance. He's you know, making sure he's cool. Bees here. You know, what are they doing? He's checking them out for whatever reason. Maybe he's not letting them in, maybe he's a foreign bee, but they definitely don't look too happy with each other. You know? like look at those guys are wrestling on the ground yeah. right there. Look at, they're going at it. Yep. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Oh, see ya. It, it could have been a bee from another hive uh, where the bees that live here, this is their entrance. They got it with their lives. And they'll sting. You know, it's not about the single bee, it's about the... It's about the greater good. That's right. It's interesting to me because, I mean, these bees care more about the betterment of their hive and their colony than they right. do their own selves. And it seems like in today's day and age, Everybody's more worried about for me? themselves yeah. Yeah. than everybody else. And True. It seems a little flip-flop to me. I don't know. Yeah, what do you they, think, America? Yeah. Well, you know what we shouldn't be doing? We normally sit in the end. Smoking them. <laughs> so you just want to walk away out of their pattern. It's nonchalant. Hey, I was just coming to say what's up. Just put in a nutshell what we've done here today. We, we yeah. checked we checked Basically, the Basically, we winterized. We checked the weight. We didn't actually lift it up. But we did check the top box that's all honey. Um, I did put my medications in. And then 
the mouse guard in front. So those are the main things we have to do right now, uh, being mid to late September. October, we can do a hive wrap and basically that's it. That sounds good. I'm happy we finished this alive and well. Um, <laughs> on to the next. Now, are we going to be extracting too? We can if you want. Let's do it. All right. We'll be back, America. Now we're in the extraction room. Um, this is where you come to kind of comb through the combs and extract what they do, honey, propolis, or beeswax. We'll be getting all three of those. Today. Exactly. Basically what we do is we take the box, uh, we take them off the hive. You have your, your average honey super, you can take a frame out. Now, you'll notice most of this is uncapped. What is an uncapped? We'll just lightly scratch, okay? Now you can see the dripping honey. When we take the, the supers, the honey supers, we'll, a big stack of honey supers, we'll take one frame, we'll put it in a chain on capper. Basically what it does, it actually shaves or chains a little of the wax, okay? So it shaved the wax, and this is an empty frame. It is not a frame that weighed honey, and I just wanted okay. to show you. We'll put them in this for storage. This is an extractor. It's like the uh, spin cycle of your washing machine. We'll actually put the frames in, and once we get all 20 frames in, then we start the spinner. But basically, extracting is just spinning the honey. So we'll take other frames out, noticing there's only a little spot where they covered with wax. Towards Ooh. the end of the season, they know they're going to be using the honey. They won't cap it, because okay. they know they're going to take it down. That side is a little spot. Normally, we'll have, every frame would have um, full capping, and would actually use the chain on capper. Actually, see how the capping's look all choppy? Yep. That's actually what a full frame of wax capping would look like after we extracted it. Okay. I'm just putting it in here strictly for weight. It's on our clutch. The dash, you do that. Oh yeah. Hear it hitting the sides? Yep. Now, I know those frames don't have a ton of honey in it, so you won't have too, too much coming out, but there'll be a little honey dripping. I like that drizzle. Yep. That drizzle is actually coming from these frames. Wow. It's almost done extracting. And if you put your, your head in the breeze, take a whiff. It smells like like mammals, like 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 it smells like an insect would smell. Like almost it like, smells like nature. Wax <laughs> nature. Yeah, yeah it's honey. awesome. It's just, we'll shut this off after they're all done spinning out. Now we definitely didn't see a ton of honey come out. Right. The liquefy. If you look down there, it looks a little, you know, dirty, but it is not. It is propolis wax and honey. We slightly heat that up so all the wax and propolis come to the top. We pump off the bottom. A little pump, we fill all these buckets, and obviously we have pallets and jars that we eventually go to. And uh, speaking of the jars, why don't we take a walk over to the bottling room and we can show you how we bottle. Sounds good, let's go. All right. So basically this is our bottling room. You know, we saw the buckets in the other room. They actually get crystallized, okay? okay? So what happens is we actually give them a bath. It's called, you know, a liquefier. We'll liquefy the honey. These buckets are probably from June, and they have some crystals in it. I can't put it in a jar with crystals. So I heat them up until it's all liquid, and then I dump them into my bottling tanks. Now, you notice I have two tanks. This is for light honey. It's my light early summer honey. Uh, and then over here we have the bigger tank. We get more darker honey in late season. Okay. You know, so. What's uh, the difference between light honey and dark honey? The light honey is actually sweeter. Okay. Uh, the glucose, it actually uh, uh, crystallizes faster. Some different uh, nectars, different flowers. Normally fruit or early season flowers are lighter. Uh, later season cucumber or squash or goldenrod or a purple loosestrife have a darker color honey. I mean, that's, it's pretty simple. So depending on the, the pollen or the flower selection, the honey ends up being different. I'll bottle out one, I'll let you bottle out of the other. Here we go, right. let's do this. So we just grab a couple jars. Sure thing. I'll watch you first. I, I like to take the jar and not touch it to the nozzle, but put my finger so I don't spill. Now this is the lighter, and this is actually coming out a little bit slow because I haven't had this on. There's a uh, temperature right there, it reads 80 degrees. Well, these are, Tanks have a, a, a double layered jacket, and basically that's water heated. So in this spot right here, we put water, heat it up. So this is, honey's only at 80. If I want to bottle a big order, 
I'll put the tank up to like 95 to 100. Not to cook it, but the viscosity will pour 10 times faster. So that's a light one. Now, your turn. All right, so just lift this bad boy up. No, oh, oh, down, I'm sorry, push down. It's a lever, there you go, push down. There we are. Uh -huh. See how fast it comes out? Oh yeah, that's a quick one. Now stop, there we go. Yep, that's it. I have bottled honey. So there's your, there's your example of our early honey and then the later season honey. Oh yeah, you can and definitely that, see a difference. Vast difference. Oh yeah, big time. Yeah, you know, so I prefer this, it's sweeter. Uh, this is a stronger honey flavor. If you were gonna cook, this is what you wanna use. But if you wanna use it for purely a sweetener, that's the best. Cool. That's it. Sounds good. For our company, we have the Essex County Honey Company label on it. You guys do a thorough job here, I mean, like, you know, you get your own bees, you make your own hives, you harvest the hives, you go in there, you uncap them, you extract the honey, you come in here, you bottle them. I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed. I mean, you know, for a small operation uh, or a small staff, you guys have a pretty huge operation going on here, man. It's awesome. It's a lot of labor, let me tell you. Delicious honey. Ready to go. Served up. Cook it, eat it. Tea. Cereal. Apple pie. Apple pie. Honey pie. Any kind of pie. I'm excited. Well, I really appreciate you be letting us become a part of this. I mean, today we've learned really everything that bees have to offer to us, which is surprisingly a lot. Um, every third food, every third spoonful of food you eat, it, it wouldn't be possible without honey bees. So, I mean, you guys are doing your due diligence. So, I appreciate it. You guys do good work, and I wish you guys the best of luck. Thank you very much. And, uh, that's our show for today. Um, I'm Sean Donahue from LinCam TV saying all the best and tune in next time. LinCam TV has gone viral. Be sure to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Flip TV. For the up-to-date LinCam news and video on demand. We're back here at the Homestead, 527 Western Avenue in Lynn, Massachusetts, and I'm happy to say it's a bee-free environment. Um, I love bees, I love what they do, but there's something about 20,000 of them swarming around your head that makes you feel uneasy. Uh, now all we've got to do is enjoy the fruits of our labor. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, uh, you can reach out to us at facebook.com slash TV. I'm Sean Donahue from North Shore Infrastructure, saying that's the buzz. So sticky and honey. Hmm. That's a lot of honey. I'm not sure you're just supposed to eat this. Hive five. But before we do this, I really have to comb my hair. <laughs>